Thanks for having me here today in part of your environmental activities. Um, you talk about biodiversity in a changing climate and my perspective as a national program manager at Force Ontario. So just a little ed uh, outline today about what I'm going to be going over. First I'll do an introduction about me, uh, my career path, and then a little bit more about Forest Ontario and what the organization does. And then we're going to move into more some of the threats to biodiversity, invasive species, habitat loss, and extreme weather. And then looking at some of these solutions we have to climate change and biodiversity. Um, so look at nature-based solutions and then we're having Andy come up and talking about some more ways we can use indigenous knowledge to monitor biodiversity as well. So I don't know if SDCI is here today, but uh, okay, perfect, we got SDCI here today. Uh, Andy and I both started out at SDCI, so like you guys, oh, I think we had Ms. Tran Pleasure and Mr. Kayan. Uh, so we went to Envirothon and attended high school in Strathroy. Um, but I uh, also spent a lot of time outside um, going on walks or camping with my family or involved in things like Envirothon at school and this gave me um, kind of my background to get interested in the environment and I chose to move on to Fleming College after high school where I took the ecosystem management uh, program and this really gave me a great foundation of my education here. Uh, there's lots of hands-on activities, so going out in the field and doing sampling, like um, benthic sampling in rivers and creeks, uh, soil sampling or, or wildlife tracking in the winter. And then I also went to Trent University, um, where I did another two years to finish my degree in environmental science. And these were both really great uh, academic institutions, so if you are in grade 12 or grade 11 and are looking at a career in the environment, please feel free to talk to me about my experiences with either of these um, institutions. After, uh, after college and during college, like many students, I was, uh, did tree planting. So the main way I did this was uh, labor. Lots of students get into tree planting right after as the first um, job into the environment. Um, so there's some jobs like tree planting, but also had other opportunities with uh, the local organizations around, uh, like sampling in the creeks or um, doing conservation management in the local conservation areas. And after I worked my way up after tree planting, I, I sort of moved into some more landscape planning positions. And Sarah touched on this in her presentation, but looking at the issues that affect our landscape on a whole in, here in southwestern Ontario. And for me particularly, I was focused in Middlesex County and the issues in this region. Some of those include habitat fragmentation, so we don't have a lot of connectivity between our forests and wetlands and prairies. And other issues like habitat loss and um, issues in the Great Lakes with water quality. And as Sarah mentioned, it, it is quite boring um, policies and government, but that is one of uh, the essential parts to the environment. So I, I worked on things like can, the Canadian Ontario Lake Erie Action Plan. And these are some of the documents that the government puts out there um, with partners uh, on the ground and research organizations to create a plan to address the issues on our landscape and plan to fix these things that affect our biodiversity and environmental health. Um, so that was my background leading up to now and now currently I am working with Forest Ontario on the Two Billion Tree Program. The Two Billion Tree Program is a program by the federal government. Um, you may have heard of it. And it's the goal of planting two billion trees across Canada by 2030. Um, <clears throat> so trees are a nat nature-based solution and Canada is trying to meet some of its goals. Um, we have climate change and biodiversity targets in the nation and the government has recognized that there needs to be a solution to reach these goals and one of these ways is to plant more trees. Nid, do you have a question?
Oh, go ahead, please. Um, with the two billion tree plant, I'm not sure if you know, but does with that um, that plan, does it also um, consider like habitat loss and what trees are being cut down? Yeah, exactly. So. Um, the Two Billion Tree Program, we'll get into that a little bit as we go through the Forest Ontario model and sort of how we're delivering on climate change and habitat loss and planning, how we, how we planting the right tree. So it's great that we want to plant two billion trees across Canada, but like you said, we need to be making sure we're planting the right tree at the right time, at the right place. Um, or we will not be growing healthy, resilient ecosystems and we will not be meeting um, the issues that are on the landscape facing Canadians, like habitat loss. So Forest Ontario is a national charity and we kind of work on three different things and our goal is to sustain a forested landscape. Uh, the first one is restoration. So that's where we're going out on the ground and doing that uh, tree planting and um, improving the earth through a nature-based solution. And then the second one is community engagement. Uh, we hold outreach events to create more awareness around issues like the environment. Um, for example, we had our, our annual conference a month ago in Toronto where we had around 300 people and it's important to have education events like this where we can bring people out and talk about the issues that are facing us as a whole. And then education as well. So the Envirothon is a great um, example of that and what we're doing today. And then restoration, that's the department I work in. And again, we do that in three different ways. We do the on the ground work, which is our restoration. Uh, working with partners and landowners to put trees on private lands uh, within Canada and then providing training and networking opportunities. So one of the biggest parts um, about restoration is it's, it's not as simple as planting a tree so that we need to have lots of training supports uh, for the, with the workers looking to come into the sector to learn how to plant a tree or learn what the right tree to plant is. And then the last one is creating community and networks to talk about restoration with. So today, here is a great example of networks and community and talking about restoration. And it's, we get all these different examples and learning from each other today. So those are our three ways that we look at restoration in Canada. And nature-based solutions is the mechanism that we call our tree planting. This is the term that you will hear. Um, basically, it's any natural solution that we have to climate change. So trees can improve our air and sequester carbon. Uh, they can provide habitat for biodiversity. And they provide just so many different benefits and are a natural solution to the issues that we're seeing on the landscape today. Some of the different forest projects that we take on, and you might use this in your uh, project example for this afternoon are four different types of rest forest projects that we do. So afforestation, that's taking a piece of land that had no previous tree cover and putting uh, trees on it. In southwestern Ontario context, this really includes a lot of the farmland that you see around here. So when we're putting trees on that land, that is called afforestation, not reforestation. Riparian is planting trees along uh, creek sides and along rivers to create better habitat for aquatic species and terrestrial species as well as um, improve water quality. And then another big one we have in southwestern Ontario is windbreaks. Uh, so we have lots of farm fields and we have lots of winds. So planting windbreaks and tree lines along the perimeters of our fields can really help with soil erosion and keeping our really important fertile soils here and out of our creeks. And then the last one is just restoration. And this can kind of incorporate a bit more types of habitat restoration where we're maybe putting um, some bird boxes up as well and creating some more habitat features or um, restoring after 
natural disaster like uh, the tornado that went through near Ottawa a couple of years ago. So why are we doing this? Well, because we don't have very many trees left in southwestern Ontario um, compared to the rest of the province. All of Ontario is at around 26% tree cover um, and experts have determined that you need around 40% tree cover for a healthy ecosystem. And then some areas of southwestern Ontario, so thinking about Windsor and Essex, they're as low as 5% tree cover on the landscape. And then looking at what, which sites are we going to plant and this here is so pictures of a couple sites that we would look at. Uh, these are former farmland that have been turned into a restoration project. And usually they're planted near areas that they can provide more benefits to, so adjacent to surrounding habitat like natural heritage systems or creating more connectivity on the landscape as well. There's really a strategic approach to planning projects and we saw that in Sarah's presentation all the research that goes into planning restoration and ecosystem management within an area. And then to give you guys an idea of is restoration happening here locally where you live, I always like to highlight the partners that we work with. Um, so if you are interested in what's happening here locally or the issues happening in the London, Middlesex, Elgin regions, check out these uh, organizations. Usually they have volunteer positions or um, employment opportunities, especially right now coming up into the summer. Um, there's some great opportunities there as well. And they prepare a lot of the local reports around watershed health or soil health and wildlife monitoring as well. All right, next we're gonna get into how and why do we plan for biodiversity. Um, and there's lots of threats in Canada to biodiversity, and you guys mentioned some of them there, like invasive species. You may have heard of the emerald ash borer. This invasive species that's taken out a lot of uh, the ash um, species within Canada and reduces the biodiversity of our forests. Some other threats to biodiversity include the habitat loss. So there with the housing, um, we have more needs for housing and we see our forests and landscape fragmented from that. We mentioned stronger storms and extreme weather. So here we have a picture of forest fires within Canada um, and their presence over the last hundred years. And then species at risk, losing some of our important species like the cerulean warbler here pictured, it really um, needs deciduous forest habitat and it is now a threatened species. So losing some species like this are why we need biodiversity. And we're always trying to build ecosystem resilience to uh, protect and mitigate against um, invasive species and other threats from climate change. So how can we protect ourselves and how, what do we do at Forest Ontario? Sorry to break it to you, but uh, we still have to do homework. Don't get out of it after high school. So we review lots of scientific papers. Uh, we review government uh, maps and documentations that have been assembled by reports. So here's the, the priority places for species at risk in Canada. This is the Pan-Canadian Priority Place Framework. And it highlights where species at risk are in Canada and those priority places for protecting them. So we use things like this into our planning and deciding where we can do restoration on the landscape. Our second way of how do we go and tackle this big uh, issue of climate change and biodiversity? Well, the second one is collaboration. So using all our partners um, to get the work done. We work with a lot of different people, uh, Forest Gene Conservation Association, Indigenous Nations, conservation authorities, and they all bring um, specific knowledge and expertise and voices to the table. Um, and together we'll be able to make um, strides against climate change. Sort of our model at Forest Ontario, uh, this is how we work. We go out and collect seeds uh, during the fall and summer time and then we bring those seeds into nurseries and we work with nursery partners so you may have seen 
some of your big greenhouses around. We work with those greenhouse partners to grow trees. And then we work with our local partners to plant them. So there's, we plant around 2 million trees every year in Ontario. And some of them are planted here. And they go on, out onto private landowners' land, like that project you're going to be looking at this afternoon. And after we uh, plant the projects, we do a lot to make sure that the, pro that the trees will grow successfully. And one of those biggest things we're looking at is seed collection. Um, the start for any successful restoration project is having high quality seed. And why is this important? It's important because if we're not planting a genetically diverse tree, a tree that is suited to the area, um, in 20 years from now, it will not be a healthy looking tree. It will not be able to um, deal with the, the climatic changes that we have here in Canada and local landscape. So we work with like 45 collectors every summer to go out and collect all the seed to plant these trees. Um, so clicking, picking up pine cones and acorns, um, maple leaf keys, and collecting those all and growing them at our nurseries produces the trees that we plant every spring. And we have to start looking at different things now with our seed collection, like assisted migration. So as we're getting hotter temperatures in the summer, or longer growing seasons, or um, more invasive species. We're looking at the climate as a whole on a landscape. And this is a map here developed by Natural Resource Canada and the Canadian Forest Service. Um, as you can see down here, it has the United States in the bottom half of the Great Lakes. And this is where they're looking at regions that are expected to change their growing regions or temperatures over the next 20, 30 years with climate change. So what we're doing is taking trees from Kentucky and Pennsylvania and Ohio and bringing them up to Ontario because these trees are more suited for warmer weather and hotter conditions, which we expect to be um, having here in Ontario with climate change. And it's pretty cool, it's happening here locally. Uh, there's an example, these are the planting sites that we have in Ontario with um, these different test plots of migrated trees from the United States. And they're happening in southwestern Ontario and with the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority. So if you're interested in that, feel free to look into more into the assisted migration. But something that is becoming more important as we face changing climates. We're just going to skip a couple slides here because we're running out of time and we still have Andy to present. So just a couple stats from Forest Ontario. What is our impact? We've planted 43 million trees so far since 2010. So we've done a lot of work in southwestern Ontario, um, but there's still a lot more to be done. And around 8,500 sites and 20,000 hectares of land have been um, in the program. And here's just a map of the planting sites across Canada. Again, a real focus on southwestern Ontario. But now Forest Ontario is expanding and doing more projects across Canada as well to sort of meet these 2 billion tree targets and climate and biodiversity issues that we face. Uh, here's just an example of what restoration looks like. So a first year planting in that top square moving all along to year 15. One important thing we do is monitor all our sites for biodiversity and we work with local partners and different knowledge systems to do this. So now I'm going to invite up Andy. She's a species at risk uh, specialist with Chippewa the Thames First Nation and she's going to tell us a little bit more about her work. Thanks Andy. So hi everybody, my name is Andy Elber, I am Bear Clan and I am from Chippewas of the Thames First Nation. 
So a little bit about my education background. I graduated from Wadima University in a Bachelor of Honors Science. So I did double honors in environmental science and health science. I also had the opportunity to go to field school at Al Sabal Institute of Environmental Science where I took conservation biology and aquatic biology. And that's kind of where I found my passion for snakes and turtles. That's true. And fish. Um, I completed my Master of Environment at um, Environment Sustainability at Western University and then I'm currently a PhD candidate at University of Guelph where I'm doing environmental science. Um, the title of my PhD is Optimizing Community-Based Wildlife Monitoring, Prioritizing Indigenous Knowledge Systems and Values. So on this next slide is a map of Chippewas of the Thames First Nation. Um, in the lime green color there you can see that it's different colored and it is our conservation impact bond. So that is protect, that's 250 area hectares of protected land and that's where a lot of my work is based out of. And then the other green chunks, um, that is uh, band owned land and so that is where most of my work is done within Chippewas of the Thames. So being a species that we're specialists, we do plenty of monitoring within Chippewa, such as water sampling. So we have a lot of creeks. We have five creeks that come off um, the Thames River. And in those creeks, we sample for um, fish, electrofishing, and we also do macroinvertebrates, so bug sampling. Um, so we do the bug sampling to see how the water quality is. And the electrofishing is just done to help us do diversity of the fish within the the watershed. Um, we also do soil sampling along uh, fields and off fields and that is to help with us know for agriculture runoff and then we also do different species of risk monitoring such as monitoring snakes, turtles, fish and birds. And so one specific um, example I can talk about is um, we have swiney softshell turtles that are located along the Thames River in our area. Um, so it is distinguished by its snorkel-like snout. Um, threats of these are its um, the disturbance of the nesting sites by both humans and predators and injury um, and death due to boat boat propellers and fishing. Um, so some restoration work that we are doing is restoring their warding banks and planting native species to help promote this. So these species have been impacted by climate change. Um, to, we started this project about three years ago. In the first year we collected um, about 100 spiny soft shells and we were able to incubate them working with Upper Thames and we incubated them and we released 75 back into the Thames. Um, the second summer we were able to collect over 300 eggs and we were able to release 156 spiny soft shells back into the Thames. And then this past summer there was a whole bunch of flooding due to climate change um, and we weren't able to collect any eggs due to the flooding. So the flooding came during egg nesting time and the eggs were unfortunately under the water for more than 72 hours which unfortunately we were not able to collect after that um, due to the shell being too softened so we kind of let nature do its thing and unfortunately we weren't able to incubate any. This summer we'll hopefully we'll be able to collect the eggs as soon as they are laid and have a better outcome with that. Um, so we do work with a lot of different um, collaborators and partnerships such as uh, Forest Ontario, Forest Canada, um, Alice, Upper Thames, Lower Thames, Thames Talbot Land Trust um, and with that we do a lot of restoration work. So as I said along the spiny soft shells we are creating a buffer there and we're planting native plant species and tree species but we're also doing work um, in multiple areas throughout our nation. So another key area is um, we are trying to create an oak savanna to a field that is usually flooded. Um, we are now going to be taking that field back and planting trees and native um, grasses there in hopes that it will uh, bring back more diversity and be a bird habitat. So the, our, our key takeaways for Andy and I uh, today, as you can see, restoration and solving for biodiversity or loss or climate change is really complex. Um, from the Forest Ontario perspective, we look at planning um, to management and then monitoring after. So all these important aspects of restoration and kind of our, my key takeaways are collaboration and partnerships. And that's why we have, Andy and I are working together today here today to show you guys collaboration and partnership it's really important to work together and use the other groups um, that are, have like-minded ideas 
um, to work on the environment together. Uh, second key takeaway is local knowledge and decision making. So um, we always try to promote using local decision making, so knowledge from the area, um, from the local environmental organizations that can provide um, solutions to the issues that are affecting them. So whether it's habitat loss in London, Ontario, or wildfires in BC, talking to the local people on the landscape and having them involved in the decision making and management decisions around the environment is really important. And then my third takeaway, because I'm silly, is go outside. The best place to learn about the environment is uh, to go outside, spend time in nature, observe, and do things like this. So I would also say congratulations to you all for being here today and participating in Envirothon. And uh, keep up the great work.